morning everyone. It is Thursday, December 8th. I have the date correct today. <laughs> I realized when I was editing my vlog last night that I said wrong date yesterday. Sorry about that. Right now I am just assembling Casey's lunch for today. Uh, usually Bill does the sandwiches, but unfortunately Bill is in bed right now. He has stomach flu. So I definitely feel for him because you, know, you guys know I had it and it was a bad one. So yeah, he's in bed and um, hopefully he'll get better faster than I did because he does not have RA and hopefully it won't be as bad as the one I had. So but that is what I'm doing right now. And I am tired. I am very, very tired. Sorry. I slept well last night. I did. But I've just, I've been doing a lot of working. Just, just work, work, work. And so I am really, really ready for Saturday and <laughs> sleeping in. So, but at least today um, I'm at the Math Institute. So that, that's nice. It's, it's a change. It's, it's a day out of the classroom. Um, they do provide lunch there. That's really nice. They do um, like a catered lunch that comes in. It's just soups and sandwiches and salads, but the soups are always really, really good. And I enjoy the class. That, that's the big one. I really, really enjoy participating in the class because you learn an incredible amount. And I feel so much more confident with, I, I mean, I've always considered myself a good math teacher, but I'll be honest, um, like the eight mathematical practices, part of the Common Core, the Common Core itself, because it, it was new, it was changed. I, you know, it's one thing to think that you're a good math teacher, but are you sure you're really meeting all of the targets for the grade level and the subject matter that you're supposed to be covering? Because if you're just teaching from the math book and nothing else, odds are you're not actually addressing all of those common core issues because no math book is always 100% complete. And we have the everyday math, which I actually find to be a struggle. I, I'm not really all that impressed with everyday math, and I also don't think um, the district is all that impressed with everyday math because I've heard that there is talk of looking into adopting a different math program possibly next year or the year after that. One second. Sorry, I had to get sandwich bags. So I'm glad to know that, you know, regardless of the math program we have in our district, at least I'm getting a training that is allowing me to see the gaps in the math series and hopefully plug those holes. But just because I may see the gaps in the math series and just because I'm teaching to the gaps in the math series doesn't mean my children are necessarily getting all those gaps filled. Um, yeah, math is definitely a harder subject in my school district because the kids come to us missing so many of those foundation skills. You know, I'm supposed to start on day one with, you know, fourth grade math and three digit subtraction and, and working on times tables and a lot of my kids come to me and they haven't mastered basic subtracting. Um, a lot of the kids still made errors at the beginning of this year with addition and regrouping. So. I initially had to put the math program on hold so that I could go back and teach a lot of those foundation skills that were missing. So yeah, that was what I was doing there. And oh, I feel like I should have something more to say. And yet I'm kind of tired. My brain literally just went, duh. So I'll pause here. Seems like a good place for a pause. Hi again. So I'm at Wayne Risa, which is our intermediate school district, and I'm here for my math class, and I'm here very early. The class doesn't start until 8.30. It is currently 7.45. 
I like to come here before everyone else arrives and like I brought the papers that I didn't get a chance to grade yesterday. I'm going to grade them right now and get them into my uh, roster so that I can get those into the computer system later. And I just find it really peaceful here. Also, uh, it's dark outside so you can't see anything right now, but the grounds here are really nice too. So maybe when we have lunchtime or our first break, I'll give you a quick little tour of the place and let's just see outside how pretty it is. And it's snowing. Yay! It's snowing today. It's very little, very light, although we're supposed to get a lot of snow on Sunday and we're supposed to get even more snow on Tuesday. They're actually talking snow days for Wednesday. Yeah! Because I need a day. I do. I have presents to wrap and cookies to bake and stuff to do. So I'm in my math class and we just read how big is a foot and it's about a king who wants a bed made for his wife but the king's got big feet and the apprentice has teeny tiny feet so the apprentice ends up in jail and then now the activity we're doing we had to draw our big queen and each table had to have different sized feet to show how the bed is made. It's snowing! I'm so excited! It's snowing! I don't think it's showing up very well on the camera. I wish it were. Oh, there you go. Now you can see it. First real snow of the year! Yay! I should be participating in a math project right now. But I'm staring out the window. I'm as bad as the kids. <laughs> If there's one thing you can always count on, it's that my boys will be outside the minute the snow hits the ground. <laughs> there's only a dusting, but they're out there playing in it. Casey, honey, you need to put your hat on. Your ears are blood red. I care. Put that hat on. It's cold out. What is it with boys? Is it some kind of a macho thing that no matter how cold it is outside, they don't need to wear a coat, or they don't need a hood, or they don't need mittens. They're fine. I mean, Casey was pretty good about wearing his winter stuff forever, and now all of a sudden he's at the age where, I don't need that. I'm good. And AJ's been that way since he was probably about, oh, sixth grade, as soon as he got to like middle school. He's like, oh, I can go to school in nothing but a hoodie. I'm fine. Boots? Who needs boots? Why would I wear those? Boys, go figure. Morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Yay! Made it to Friday. Today is December 9th, and I am going to combine my vlog from yesterday with today. Um, I didn't actually record a lot for vlogging purposes yesterday. I was at a math PD and it was actually really hard to vlog at a math training because there's all these people there who, you know, you can't get them in the shot because they have not agreed to be on camera. Um, you can't really show a lot of the things that are going on in the class. so. There's not really a lot recorded from yesterday. One of the cool things though about this math training is you get materials and you get some amazing materials to then bring into your classroom and use with the kids. Right now, all those materials are sitting in my car because they are a lot. There's a lot and it's kind of heavy. So when the kids get into the room later today and the sun is shining, well, not so much the sun is shining, but it's daylight. I will give my keys to one of my students and let them go get everything in the car and bring it into the classroom. Uh, that's one of the perks of having fourth graders. They can go fetch things from the car for you. And you can trust them to lock the door. So I will definitely share all those materials with you guys later today, or if not today, Monday, when I get the chance. Um, I'm only here till lunchtime today because today is my day to go to the hospital and have my Remicade treatment for my RA, which it's kind of important that I do that. And I'm definitely feeling like I need it. With the change in the weather, I'm feeling the cold in my knees and feet. Um, I'm noticing that by like six, seven o'clock in the evening, after all day of being on my feet and doing the things I gotta do, I'm starting to settle real sore in the evening. So it, timing is really good for my Remicade today. And the room is actually pretty clean. The, t the tabletops are a little messy. I guess they kind of had to leave in a hurry yesterday with the sub that was here. 
so there's a lot of papers and things on the tabletops, and I'm just going to leave those here for the kids to sort out when they get back. My desk, though, at least was nice and clean, and the sub even collected all the work and uh, packeted things together with clips, so I'm very grateful for that, and I do need to go to the office, though, and sign in, and I'm really hoping and praying that my PRC order has come in. Also, one of you guys asked me in the comment for December 7th vlog that went up if I do a lot of ditto sheets or worksheets in the classroom. And to, the, to that, the answer would definitely be no. And I know, looking at my lesson planning for next week, it does look like I'm doing tons of dittos for next week, but if you were listening to the what I was saying, but that's kind of because a lot of those things are being introduced. Uh, up until now, the children have not had reading response logs or um, record keeping logs. I've been the one doing all of that. But I'm wanting to incorporate more writing into all aspects of the Daily Five, not just the writing block of it. So that's why the logs are coming into play. Also, I like the log for the read aloud response. That one, I think, is a really great way of figuring out who's following along, who's really paying attention, who's getting it. You know, can they respond to these? Because as teachers, we know the drill. When we're sitting on the carpet and we read aloud to the students and then we start to talk about it with our children, it's usually the same seven or eight kids who raise their hand to participate over and over and over. Some of the kids are not participating because they're not in a position to participate because maybe they weren't paying attention. Some of the kids don't participate because they're shy or they may feel self-conscious. And so for those kinds of kids, I do a lot of think, pair, share, where we talk to our partners or talk in a small group because they feel safer doing it that way as opposed to speaking out in front of the entire class. But, so for those children who are reluctant to comment, at least now I can see something in writing where I can go, yes, this kid is getting the story. They're on track. So that's where those logs are coming into play. And again, those logs will not be something they're going to be doing every single day. Because under no circumstance do I want the logs or the worksheets to take the place of their actual uninterrupted time to just read because for me that is the number one thing a reading teacher can do let the kids read so that's where all that's coming in also those anchor charts I have anchor charts all over this room but I'm running out of wall space so I liked the idea of having the smaller personalized anchor charts that they can keep in their daily five folders and that on a moment's notice I can say okay everyone pull out that character traits anchor chart we're gonna take a quick look at that and remind ourselves so that's where the the anchor charts are coming from so with that though I'm gonna go run to the office and hopefully all of these logs that I've been waiting for are finally there that would be really great <laughs> Very happy everything arrived and we are good to go for Monday's lessons. So here is their independent reading responses. And the cool thing about this one is that the pages coincide with our anchor charts. So it's like the one page is summarizing. Here we have characters. Here we have setting. So like, we've been focusing on character traits. Today might actually be a great day where they get this book, they write the date, they write the name of the book they're reading, and then they write about one of the characters in a book they are currently reading by themselves. And then explain why you chose this trait, why did you choose this character, and provide at least one piece of evidence to support the trait you chose. So I can actually say to them, you know, today in your independent response books, I want you to go to the page about themes and respond to a theme that you see in your book. Or go to the page about this and respond this way. So that's the independent reading response. This is the in-class reading responses. And again, here was that page that we will be 
talking about next week and then here's where they can start putting their class responses to the read alouds. This one is their reading portfolio and this one is really more just the list, whatever. So my reading wish list is in here as well as their top 10 favorite books that they love throughout the school year and then completed books logs. So this is where they'll be logging in the books that they're reading. And there's a few more pages for logging in. And then here is the big list of the anchor charts, summarizing, um, making inferences, making connections, point of view, making predictions, theme, so setting, so love these. And then I went ahead, and even though I'm not going to be using these for a while yet, I went ahead and printed um, the one I bought from Bridget, and I just need to cut off the edges and get those ready to go. So I just finished getting my Remicade treatment at the Carmano Center, and I am shocked when I went inside, the sun was shining, there wasn't a cloud anywhere to be seen in the sky. Now, all of a sudden, the sun has completely gone and thick, thick gray clouds have moved in. So, that's okay though, because it's Friday, and I am so truly, truly happy that it is Friday because I am tired, people. I am so very, very tired. In fact, I actually fell asleep for about 20 minutes in there while I was hooked up to the IVs. So right now, though, I'm going to run to the market because Bill is home. He's sick. And last night, he was wanting some ice cream really bad because he's got stomach flu and nothing sounded good to him. Nothing tasted good to him. So I'm going to go to the store and get him some chocolate ice cream. So at the last second, I decided to go to Target instead of Kroger because I just really wasn't in the mood to go to a supermarket and because I really happened to like Target. So I know they will sell ice cream here for my hubby, although I just got a text message from him saying that he is actually feeling a little bit better, which is good because he's now been sick for uh, about going on a day and a half, maybe two days now. So I'm glad he's feeling a little better. I'm still going to get him this treat though. I've been wanting to get a little hat, like one of these. Seriously? But I never buy these because honestly, how do you not get hat head? Oops. And I dropped it. But, you know, I'll put this on my head for you know, 20 minutes to stay warm, and then when I take it off, my hair is ruined. Seriously, how do people wear those without completely trashing their hair? I don't know. I cannot figure it out. But I think they look absolutely adorable when you're wearing them. So, oh my goodness. This is just like the scarf that I got in my FabFitFun box from Mod Cloth. It's a blanket scarf. It's identical. And it's $7 here, whereas the Mod Cloth version was $35. But that is absolutely my blank, although I will say mine's a little bit thicker than this one. But talk about it, exact knockoff. Wow. Seven bucks. If you guys want a blanket scarf, go to Target. Seven dollars. Great price. I'm at Target, and I am really liking their veggie tray. We are having a party tomorrow night with a lot of people coming over, and I have to say that their vegetable tray is a lot better than the one at Costco. The one at Costco doesn't have this much variety, and it's much bigger, and a lot of times we have way too many veggies left over. And you know what? I am going to go ahead and grab a Kukakuna, or Kakuna, sharp cheddar cheese ball, because these things are awesome. Totally awesome. Into the buggy it goes. I could totally kick myself right now, because at home I have three $1 coupons to get my Tropicanics probiotics juice. And of course, I'm here at Target and the coupons are all at home, but this stuff is so good, it's delicious, and I am a big believer in probiotics. I'm gonna get a pineapple mango, and I think I'm gonna get 
Hmm, let me see the calorie count here. 130 for eight ounces, 130 for eight ounces. All right, so the calories are pretty much the same. Let's go ahead and get, let's get the strawberry banana. Okay. Awesome, ice cream is on sale, three for 10. We will not be buying three, but, hmm, ooh, cookies and cream, Rocky Road, Decisions, decisions. I know I want to get him a chocolate because Bill just loves a good old fashioned chocolate. But I'm actually not seeing a good old fashioned chocolate. Whoops, and I just took the sign down. Oops, my bad. <laughs> okay, come on, let's get back up here. How do we do this? There we go. All right, so there's no basic chocolate. I think he would not like double fudge brownie. Chocolate chip, cookies and cream. Hmm. I'm kind of leaning toward the... Oh, I can't make a decision. Doggone it, why couldn't they just have chocolate? Wait, 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 wait. Yes! We found one. Last one. Chocolate. So, I'm sorry I didn't finish recording at Target. My chip filled up, so, but I will be taking care of that problem later tonight. I will never have a full chip ever again. Dinner tonight is pretty easy. This is one I go to when I'm tired. This is um, chicken voila, the uh, chicken alfredo. And this is from Costco. This is the panko breaded Tyson chicken tenders. These are awesome because they are not reformatted patties. When you cut these open, they are actual chicken breasts that have been breaded. So they are really, really yummy. So now I'm going to cut a bunch of these up into smaller bite-sized pieces to add to this to make sure that we have enough to feed all four of us. Especially my three hungry guys. Although I don't know if Bill will be eating as much as he usually does tonight because he's getting better but not quite there yet. And this is how my guys spend a Friday night. Are you watching a movie we've seen a bunch, but it is a favorite. Superheroes are a big hit in our house, especially Marvel. All right, so it's time for me to put on some pajamas and call it a day. Tomorrow I will be vlogging again. Tomorrow is going to be very, very busy because tomorrow night we are having a big, big party. And I have done none of the grocery shopping for this party, except for the veggie tray that you saw me buy at Target. Uh, I did get the wine. I bought six bottles of wine for the party tomorrow. Bill will make a beer run in the morning. And we have pop here already. So that's on the agenda for tomorrow, as well as, unfortunately, cleaning this house again, because with Bill home two days, me working late on Wednesday, it is amazing how fast this house will go to crap. It really is. So, in fact, I'm not even going to turn the camera around right now because I'm not even going to show that to you. <laughs> so, with that, I hope you've enjoyed yesterday's and today's vlog. Sorry if it was a little choppy um, between the Remicade today and the in-service yesterday. I feel like this vlog isn't anywhere near up to the quality that the last few ones have, were that I've put out. But I'm trying. Not every day is exciting. Not every day is a winner. Some days are just kind of boring. So thanks for tagging along with me though. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from me in the future, click the subscribe button. And don't forget to enter the giveaway that I posted for the at the end of the stocking stuffer video. So definitely good luck to everybody on that. Talk to you later.